from becoming the guardian of his underage girlfriend to incriminating himself in his own memoir, this is Steven Tyler's dark past revealed. There was a time when the music industry thrived on the sexual abuse of girls, and Tyler was like any other rock star in those days. Things only came to light when the Me Too movement hit, and the 75-year-old Aerosmith lead singer's name kept coming up. Then in 2018, Sophie Cunningham made her groundbreaking documentary, Look Away, which took a deep dive into that era of abuse in the music scene. It gave a voice to those so-called baby groupies who had their fair share of horrifying stories to tell. One of those stories was about a girl named Julia Hockham, Tyler's ex-girlfriend, if she can even be called that. The girl met the Aerosmith legend after her 16th birthday at a concert in Portland in 1975. This was after an older girl had taken her under her wing and groomed her to look like a woman? How'd that even happen? The teenage girl had a messed up family life. Her father abandoned them when she was young, leaving them with a mountain of gambling debts and emotional turmoil. That's just the tip of the iceberg because afterward, her brother and grandfather died in an accident which led to a divorce between her mom and alcoholic stepdad. The situation became so unbearable that both she and her sister went to live with their aunt and uncle for a while. Eventually, things looked up a bit when Julia and her sister returned home to their mom. They had a new stepfather, but the dynamics weren't great. On top of that, her sister ran away from home, leaving her alone. That's when she made friends with the woman who led her down the darkest path in her life, in other words, to Steven Tyler. The doomed pair met backstage after the concert. Despite the gap of more than 10 years between them and Julia being under the consent limit, Tyler slept with her. That was just the beginning of their disturbing relationship. The American Idol judge paid off her mom to sign her legal guardianship over to him so they'd travel across state borders together, which also meant her dropping out of school and going to live with him. It's like a repeat of the Ted Nugent story. The worst part was, Julia didn't even hear it from her mom. It was Tyler who dropped the bomb on her, saying he persuaded her mom to sign the documents and claiming that she needed to go to school. At that point, she'd been completely abandoned by her mom. That's when her life as a baby groupie really began. She was deep into the wild world of the music industry, partying, drugs, limos, the whole shebang. She was living the life of a rock star. But let's be clear, there was nothing great about it. And guess what? The demon of screaming was convinced he was deeply in love with her. He'd talked about starting a family with her, and whether it was planned or accidental, his teen girlfriend got pregnant. Now it was time to meet the fam, also known as the beginning of the end, because that's when things started going downhill. His family had the kind of reaction any sane person would have if they knew their son wanted to marry a child. They weren't jazzed about it, and his grandma flat out refused to give him her ring. The unlikely pair ended up fighting once they went home after this disastrous first meeting. The situation turned desperate when their apartment caught fire and Julia narrowly escaped with her life. But Tyler's reaction to the whole ordeal was shocking. He told her it was best for her to have an abortion because of the smoke and the drugs she had taken. He was worried about birth defects. It was a traumatic decision to make and she was backed into a corner. Heartbroken and emotionally drained, the girl went through with the abortion. And you won't believe it, but Tyler was there, high on cocaine. He was snorting the entire time she was going through the process. The whole ordeal was enough to push her to leave, and in 1977, she finally did. She found her way back to her family, embraced her faith, got an education, found work, got married, and raised seven children. That's some serious strength right there. As for Tyler, he carried on being the kind of rock star who was only fit for that era. The Dream On singer took the and drugs bit of drugs and rock and roll way too seriously. But his first experience with substance was back when he was a teenager and started smoking marijuana like any normal kid during that time. In the 70s, when Aerosmith was breaking through and rocking the music scene, he had things under control. But as the decade drew to a close, things took a dark turn. And without any proper help available, his substance abuse spiraled out of control. The rock star admitted that they'd become very up during those days, and since there were no rehabs to turn to, they kept getting worse. 
On top of that, he didn't pick and choose when it came to drugs. The demon of screaming admitted in 1988 of having taken stuff like a heroin, coke, and Valium, basically anything that came his way. He loved getting high so much that he lost himself in it, losing touch with the greatness of his band. It didn't take long for the addiction to get ugly. Drugs began to take over his life and career negatively, and back then, they believed that the path to wisdom was through excess. As Tyler explained, it got really bad in the 80s. The drugs were no longer fun, they were destroying lives. He candidly shared, what happens with using is, it works in the beginning, but it doesn't work in the end. It takes you down. There's nothing but jail, insanity, or death. Fortunately for the rock star, he was surrounded by people who wanted to see him get better. He first made a few attempts to get help in the 80s, but those attempts didn't quite stick. He didn't know how bad his addiction was. Luckily for him, in 1988, his bandmates and management took matters into their own hands. They knew they had to get the lead singer sober, and that was the turning point for Tyler. He recalled how at first, it felt like they were trying to brainwash him and kill his creativity. But looking back, he realized it was exactly what he needed. They gave him an ultimatum, either go to rehab or it's the end of the road. It was ironic because some of the guys giving him this ultimatum were still partying themselves. Over time, he came to appreciate the support he received and admitted that he owes his sobriety to his bandmates and management. They've been his rock through it all. Sure that the toxic twins have been through hell together. They've had the most public of fights, from pushing each other off stage to talking about the other's success. But they've been best friends through it all, and during their darkest times, they've leaned on each other the most. Joe Perry instantly shot down rumors of them being on the outs, explaining that Tyler's his best friend for life. They're kinda like siblings who fight and then make up. The good thing is that they know that they're different people now, so they don't let those differences get in the way of a lifelong friendship. And now they're going on tour together. Yes, that's right. Aerosmith's hitting the road for one last tour. They announced the Peace Out Tour, which kicks off on September 2nd, 2023 in Philly, and will hit 40 stops across North America back in May. They're going to rock out in major cities like LA, NYC, Toronto, Chicago, and even have a special hometown show in Boston on New Year's Eve. The tour will wrap up on January 26, 2024 in Montreal. The OGs are ready to perform on stage with their classic hits all except founding drummer Joey Kramer. He's sitting this one out to look after his family and health, but that doesn't mean he won't be missed. This announcement came just months after another shocking revelation. Hawkum, who now goes by Miss Lee, has sued Tyler for sexual assault from back when they were together. She filed the lawsuit in Los Angeles thanks to a rule temporarily lifting the statute of limitations on sexual abuse suffered as a child. Miss Lee's accused him of sexual battery, assault, and intentional infliction of distress during her time on the road with the rock star, including that coerced abortion. Now this case can go south for Tyler, who's denied the allegations because Misley can use his memoir where he's mentioned similar situations to prove her story. On top of that, he hasn't tried to settle the case either, which is why it's made its way to court. Let's see if the legendary star goes on tour or to court. So, from incriminating himself in his own memoir to becoming the guardian of his underage girlfriend, this was Steven Tyler's dark past revealed.